How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you once again for joining me. So I'm right near Sherwood Forest today. I had a walk around Sherwood Forest earlier, but there's so many people and there's tracks everywhere that someone gave me a little heads up on this spot up here. So I've just parked the van. We've got about a 10-15 minute walk till we get there. Buzzing to be back out in the woods again. Nice to be in a different woods as well. I haven't even got there yet, but I already know it's going to be nice. Stoked for a little solo bushcraft camp today. I've got a few beers, some food to cook up, and we're just going to chill in the trees. Shout out to Matt Wildcamps on Instagram and Babylon Brooks for giving me a heads up about this spot. It's supposed to be like a Viking mound with a holly bush growing there or something. Should be pretty cool. So there's a lot of pine. I've just found the beech wood. Apparently there's a silver birch wood as well. I'm a few hundred meters away from it. These lads camped there a few nights ago, so I should be sweet. It's been a good 20, 25 minute walk. We've made it to the top. Lovely little spot. You can see some silver birch, some ash, some holly, beach. I'm going to go in the hammock today. I'm going to put it, put it down here in this little divot. Just there, I think. And there's a little chopping block around the corner. I can do some wood processing on. Flint and steel fire today, I think. There's plenty of dead fern around. Loads of small birch branches. Plenty of beach to burn. Off to this spot. Cheers, lads. Right, let's set the hammock up. And I'm back out of my DD Hammocks Travel Bivy Hammock. No tarp today either. I'm just going to be in the hammock looking at the stars. Gonna have a little fire going tonight to cook my food and get some warmth into me. But yeah, I want to be in the hammock without the shelter today. Camping next to three Viking graves. Can't say I've ever done that before. Alright, bed squared. Boosh. With the birds singing and the temperature, it definitely feels like a spring evening tonight. Wicked spot this. Cleared myself a bit of ground to have a fire tonight, well away from the stones. There's a public footpath literally just there. I saw someone walk down there earlier. I'm going to wait till it gets dark to light the fire. I'm in no rush, the temperature's still pretty mild. And I've still got to collect and process some wood too.
soon be time to get this fire on, I think. Starting to get a little chilly up here now. So I'm just going to chuck the rab on. Got some of the fine silver birch twigs to go straight on after the ferns. Some ash branches snapped up, some pine, some beech. I didn't use an axe or a saw, I just collected what was dead in the trees and what was on the floor. Everything's really dry so it's going to be really nice for this fire. Plenty of fern. Just have a nice big bundle and then something just to chuck straight over the top of that. Cheers, you're a Beaver Town Gamma Ray. So I'm going to get my head down now. I'm pretty tired. I'll catch you all in the morning. Morning. I just pulled a tick off my stomach where my box of short waistband was. It was itching me this morning when I woke up and I knew straight away there'd be a tick there. If there's a certain bit of skin that keeps itching me and itching me, I normally know there's gonna be a tick there. Especially if it's on your back or something and you can't check yourself till you get home. If you've got a really itchy bit of skin, it's normally a good early warning sign that you've got a tick latched on. I've got some really pointy tweezers with a magnifying glass built in. That's what I use to get the ticks off me. I just pull them straight out. I don't twist or anything. Normally it comes out. If the head stays in, they say leave it for two to three days and it should push itself out. I've never had a tick head stay in longer than that. So I think I'm going to boil some water on the gas cooker just to get a brew in quick. And then I'm probably going to have another little fire this morning so I can cook some sausage and beans. I might make a little pot hanger or something. Have a nice slow morning and enjoy my last day off work before I go back tomorrow. I've been storing the gas stove in this Forest Fundamentals pouch. It's made of canvas, doubles up as a good foraging pouch as well. And then I also use it as a little mat, anything I want to do off the floor. So it's got three jobs. Good bit of kit. I use two of the Nest Cafe two-in-ones. Three-in-ones make it too sweet, but if you want a good sized coffee, the powdered milk that's in these is sweet enough anyway.
we'll get some beech limbs for this morning's fire. Beach and birch. Just been to collect a bit of birch bark and some fern. If you just peel the real thin stuff, you don't even need to scrape a big bit of bark. Just pile all that on, get a bit of fern to go straight on after before you birch. Dead simple to get a fire going this way. Having a good base is definitely the key to a successful fire. Especially when it first gets going, keeping it up off the floor. And as your fire burns, it heats the bottom and you get much better embers that way as well. It maintains itself a lot easier with a good base. I've lit fires before on purpose where I've gone straight on the floor and it's a struggle to keep it going. It's a struggle to keep it hot. You want that good bed of embers on the bottom. You can just about see a little bit of smoke but you couldn't see any flames if you were walking along this track, which is good. Well, I'm not gonna mess about with a pot hang or anything this morning. I'm not actually very well this morning. I haven't really got the energy to do much today. I'm hoping if I get these sausage and beans into me, it might perk me up a little bit. Good old sausage and beans. Don't even know if I can finish it, you know. Look at this beech and this birch tree swapping roots. Not good. The sausage and beans lasted almost 10 minutes before it came straight back up. Oh, I wanted to carve some stuff today. I wanted to do a few bits and bobs today, but I ain't going to be able to do it. I'm going to have to go back to the van and try and get my head down for an hour or something before driving home. Could also be the Vikings just telling me to go away. <laughs> well, this is what I was going to eat. Got an old El Paso rice mill one pan kit. Just chicken, red onion, peppers, and then everything else is in the box. And then I had a bit of custard for after, but not today. All squared away. Leaving no trace, as always. All my kits packed. Got my rubbish and the rest of my food. Onwards to the van, onwards to Sherwood. I've been sick another three times on the way back to the van. Headache, vomiting, drowsiness, dehydrated. I feel absolutely terrible. Okay, I've had a quick hour snooze in the van. Got some fluids on board. I've now pulled up in a little two-car pull-in and I'm walking the half a mile to the Major Oak because I have to see Robin Hood's tree before I go home, no matter what. And I'm going to leave Sherwood somewhere in the forest for one of you guys to find with a tin of wherry. And I'm going to put the what three words on the screen. The first person to get a picture with him, either tag me on Instagram or send me it via email and I'll come and buy you a beer so I can get him back. Little trust thing, but it's a little bit of fun, isn't it? It's said to be the oldest oak tree in Britain, and they reckon it's about 800 to 1,000 years old. And they say it's where Robin Hood used to hang out. It's got all supports under the limbs and stuff now to stop the bad weather ripping them out. 
cool, that's massive. That is one fat oak. Here we are, Sherwood and his can of worry are hiding somewhere in Sherwood Forest for you. So if you want to find Sherwood and let me come buy you a beer, this is the what three words. You have to tag me in a photo on Instagram or email me a pic. EastAnglianBushcraft at gmail.com Trap poem shimmered. Best of luck. Alright legends, I'm going to finish the video here. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Please look after yourselves. Peace and love. I'll catch you next week. I'm sorry that I'm ill and the video probably sucked, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Peace and love to you all. Bye.